Hello and welcome to St Simon's in what I believe is week 11 now of Church Tube where we can't meet together in person but we are doing this to your device. And uh, this week we're seeing new freedoms which is very exciting for a lot of people. So um, many of the kids will be going back to school on Monday tomorrow, Charlie included, and that's brought much excitement in our house and much relief. And uh, this crisis has taught us to really appreciate small things, like just being able to talk to each other. And we, as we're going to see things lifting in the next few weeks, I guess um, we'll experience much joy, but um, much appreciation for the things that we've been without for so long. And uh, each week, in the last few weeks, we've been looking at our mission partners and the difficulties they're facing. This week I've been asked to talk a little bit about Helping Point in India, run by Bajuta. Now you might not know much about Helping Point, so I'll explain. They are a charity uh, which was started by Bajuta probably about 20 years ago uh, because he has a passion for making a difference to the poorer areas in India that he is from, the rural areas. And he firmly believes that the only way to change the poverty cycle there is by bringing the gospel to people. So he aims to teach people about God and about Jesus and so to change their lives and actually make a very tangible difference to the way they live. And he believes education is part of this too. So he has um, concentrated on, uh, as well as running churches and bringing aid to the communities, he concentrates on educating the kids. And specifically he runs a children's home and a school called St Simon's School that he named after our church. They are seeing great hardship because people are poor and the lockdown means they don't have access to water and food and they can no longer work in the fields and there's nothing in place to help these people. So um, starvation is a problem and people are dying of starvation. And there's also been the phenomenon of migrant workers needing to travel back to their families and because there's no transport in place at the moment they're walking thousands of miles and many are dying in the process so there's a very real humanitarian crisis as a result of the lockdown um, in India among support communities so it's hard for us to imagine with our internet shopping and our Netflix we talk about hardship, but um, the level of hardship is vast there. And th this is where uh, Helping Point have stepped in to try and help. And they're doing an amazing work providing food for the poor families. But you told me that they initially provided uh, hot meals for about 1,500 people. Um, which is an amazing feat, and now they've now switched over to divide, to providing food packages and at the moment serving about 650 families, I believe. In all of this, Bajuta and his staff are trusting God that their work will be able to start again in earnest when all this is over, and hopefully the government will see them as a legitimate um, charity uh, because of the work they're doing at the moment. That is our prayer. But to say a few words about this, we've got a message from Paducah, which I will pass you over to now. Hi, St. Simon Church. My name is Vidyuta Kumar Singh, and I'm the founder director of Helping Point Ministry here in India. Last 20 years, I'm working in the eastern part of India, and uh, uh, through my project like uh, the St. Simon School, Decker Center, Church Plant Ministry, Widow Care Ministry. Through all this project, we are spreading the gospel in this area. And I'm very thankful to St. Simon Church for supporting my ministry for last 10 to 15 years. And I, I really thankful 
for your support because your support making a huge difference in the people lives in this part of the world so i am very thankful to all of you in the last two months uh, helping point uh, facing a challenge to help the people during this covid 19 situation uh, especially my part of india is locked down for last uh, more than 60 days and it has been a really difficult time for the people because in this area uh, where helping point work in the helping point community most of the people comes from the very poor family and uh, mainly they are a daily laborer and daily wages people and they earn and they eat that kind of life they have due to the covid uh, they they are facing lot of difficulties they are not getting job or they are not earning anything in every day so ever since the lockdown began and uh, helping point uh, trying to help the needy people as much as they can and uh, during this uh, covid 19 situation god has also given us a opportunity to to take the gospel into the community as we have been doing this one for since last de two decade but this is also a very special time for us to spreading the gospel in the villages because we are going to the people helping helping them as well as same time we are talking them about Jesus and spreading the gospel once again a uh, lot of activity have been going on in the community and i am very thankful for you people for your prayer and support to our ministry and uh, because of your support and your prayer only all these things have been happening here once again i seek your uh, your support as well as more prayer for the active work god's work in this part of the world once again thank you saint simon church god bless you all the children at the school having all been sent home are not able to do any uh, online learning as our kids are because they don't have internet being from poorer families so um the teachers and staff are doing what they can to stay in contact with the kids but i think they need our prayers because it must be a very isolating time for them and i know that our kids have really missed school life i know charlie has he's missed his friends and that's what's been most difficult for him in this lockdown and for those kids i think they need our prayers father we acknowledge that this is a very difficult time harder than most of us have known in our life and we acknowledge that for some people in the world particularly in india in the poor poor communities it is unbelievably hard and um people are losing their lives to lack of food and to terrible journeys that they have to take we pray and ask for your hand in this and we know that you're still in control and you're, st you're still looking after people but what we pray is for the work and um driving passion that Pedita has over there to really see people's lives change we pray that this will happen and this can happen through this crisis that they'll see that you are a god who loves and cares for them and can provide for them and that you're a god who offers the the true solution to the problems we have in this world which is separation from you and we pray that they'll understand they can come to understand that the cross really does bring hope in desperate situations we pray for the kids at st simon school that you look after them um in their isolation and that that you'll give those kids hope and we thank you for st simon's church and that we have a community here and we pray that it'll be soon when we can all share each other's company and be together pray these things in your son's name amen few weeks ago i wasn't feeling well i thought i had the corona but i wasn't sure anyway my chest was really bad and what take place is that what i did by taking what i was taking get some medication and take that my doctor gave me some antibiotics and by the pain i was getting from my chest after that i could believe what was happening to me so 
Then my son come down with it and I said to him, I think you got the corona. He said, no, 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 I didn't got the corona. I said, I think you got the corona. And he said, no. So I was running run behind him with the medication, with the things that I have to give him. And he said, no. But his son called him and tell him to take it. Well, a few days ago he called me and he said, he was right. I did have the corona. But the funny thing happened that every, you know, like, all the churches and that the people and that I used to pray with and so on, they're calling me up and started to pray for me. And then camera called me up and said to me, Oh Pamela, I called to see if you're all right. You know, I didn't tell him what was happening. But you know, he said we pray for you. And I thought that was nice. And I said everybody was praying for me. And I felt you know, I felt at that time I felt good within myself. And what took place, one night, my chest and my lungs started to really pain me. And while that was paining me, I said, you know, I, the one man said to me, get up and take some, um, go and get some garlic and some ginger and orange and take it. And I got up and I take it. And I said, God, is this my hand? And then I started to remember the Lord prior, you know, and united me with oil. And what I did, I just, I got on says, take the holy oil, night my chest, and then I went off to sleep. And, you know, I said to myself, well, that was great. And a funny thing happened this week. I was trying to, I went shopping, and I know I didn't want to see Cameron. <laughs> so when I went, when I went shopping, I said, I look around and I see if he was there. He wasn't there. So I said, oh, this church closed. Then I decided I'm walking that side. I'm going up there because the church closed. When I reached to the church, in front of the church gate, who come up? Cameron. <laughs> so he had a witness with him. So whatever you do, God always watch you. So, you know, I thank God for bringing me back and, you know, kill my son. And we didn't end up in hospital because going in the, in the hospital now is so frightening. But God healed me. How can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word? I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Hi St. Simons, let me tell you about Geoffrey Bull. Seventy years ago, Jeffrey Bull and his missionary colleague George Patterson, both in their late 20s, entered the area of the Tibetan Chinese border with one purpose in mind, and that was to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news to people who'd never heard it before. They undertook three years of study of language for this Tibetan and Mandarin, and just after they got started, the Red Army of China came over the hills and put them both in prison, often in solitary confinement. In his book, When Iron Gates Yield, Jeffrey Bull talks about learning, to, learning every day to write a daily devotional on scripture that he could recall from memory. It kept him from going absolutely mad. It gave him a vision for his life, saved his life. Psalm 119 is a prayer of vision, great vision, because the writer or the writers know and love God's word. Churches need to get vision, and their vision must be based on scripture. We're going to be entering a season of vision at St. Simon's, and it's going to be based, and it's going to go deeper into God's word, the Bible. 
in the book of Hebrews, later on in the New Testament, it says, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, books like the Psalms as well, from the Old Testament. But now he is revealed through Jesus Christ. And the difference of these two is that the relationship was the same, the level of intimacy. But the difference was that external to the people before Jesus was the word of God. Tablets on stone originally. And God prophesied through Ezekiel in chapter 36, verse 26, that he was going to remove what he called the heart of stone with a heart of flesh. And that was prophesying Jesus, who would release his Holy Spirit on all the people. And today, this Sunday, we celebrate Pentecost, which Jewish people gathered listening to the Apostle Peter experienced the word of God preached to them the promise of Jesus, which they began to reach out with to others around the world so that Gentiles as well came in to Jesus, his kingdom, and the church got started. Three aspects of the vision of Psalm, of our section of Psalm 119. And here is the first one. It's love. It says on the second verse in, that's verse 10, that I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. All my heart, that's speaking of someone who is in love, someone who's in love with God's word because that's how they get to know God, the most important relationship that we can ever have. Do not, not let me stray from your commands. Almost images of a sheep. Sheep were so prevalent in life in these days in that part of the world. And of course, we hear Jesus declaring himself in John chapter 10 to be the good shepherd, not wanting people to stray, but to come to him and to hear his voice. To utterly love God with all our hearts involves time. And that's one of the reasons why in this past month of May, and we're going to keep it going into June as we start certainly this first week, 8 a.m. prayer times and Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. That's going to all be happening this week. In fact, this week, because it's gift day, next Sunday, the 7th of June, we need to be praying and building up to that, praying and hearing for God for how we can give financially to his work through St. Simon's. We're going to have a special extra evening from 7 till 10 p.m. Come and check in, ch check in on the Zoom link that we're going to give you for any part of these three hours so that we can be praying and hearing God together or being inspired together to go off on our own and do that. It's also important. Loving God means giving time. Second aspect that I want to draw from this part of Psalm 119 is conscience. It says in verse 11, I have hidden my, your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. As God's Holy Spirit works on the Bible, as you read it, hopefully every day a little section, it will get, if you like, hidden in your heart and you become closer and closer to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our goal. It becomes hidden in us. Maybe you use a passage of scripture every day. That can be hard to do. Why not Google Nicky Gumbel, Bible in one year? You've heard me recommend that many times before. That's just the one that I often use. There are so many daily Bible aids. John Ryland has written a Bible aid for each day of the Christian healing mission. Use one, get some scripture, and maybe pick a, a verse of it each day, or if not, just once a week, pick one of the verses that you've touched on and learn it by heart. It can never be taken away from you, just like it could never be taken away from Jeffrey Bull. He took everything away from him, his vanity, his freedom. His hair grew long in prison, like mine's growing long now because of lockdown. But they couldn't take away scripture, and it gave him this vision for life. And the last aspect of vision that we see from this part of scripture, well, it's a word that's in there towards the end, rejoicing. It says in verse 14, I will rejoice at following your statutes. 
Rejoice is a great word. And we want rejoicing as part of our vision for, for life. If we want love, if we want conscience, if we want to become more like Jesus, we also want real times of gladness and rejoicing. There's a number of ways that we can do that. But again, we see Jesus talking about rejoicing. He told the story in Matthew chapter 13, very short story, verses 45 and 46, of the man who saw a pearl that was so valuable that he went, out, went back, sold everything he had, came back and bought the pearl. And when he got it, what a time of rejoicing that was for him. Jesus talks about, in Luke chapter 15, the shepherd who had a hundred sheep, but when he lost just one, he went off to find it. And when he came back with the sheep over his shoulders, he was rejoicing and he said to others, come and rejoice with me. If you have a rejoicing heart through knowing God's word with the vision that you get for God's the love of Jesus, others will be drawn to you. Why not contact someone maybe who knows God already, someone that you've not contacted from your WhatsApp group? Contact them at random. Just send them a text and say, I'm thinking and praying for you today. Send me a prayer point. Or contact someone else who maybe doesn't know God and just ask them how their life's been going. I've challenged people with that before. I've challenged myself with it. And it's amazing how people are struck by that. So let's go for it. Let's get a vision. And let's look at what God's going to do with our lives. And remember to pray. Heavenly Father, how we thank you for this prayer of vision, the whole of Psalm 119. Lord, would you bless us as we look at your word and fall in love with you, just like the writers of these great poems did, because they knew your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord of mercy and compassion, we thank you for all our key workers and who are risking their lives on the front lines, helping to battle this virus. We pray for also those who have recently passed away, including those with coronavirus and for their loved ones. We pray for all children all around the world as they gradually return to school. We pray that you guide and protect them, their parents and carers, teachers and all their support staff. We pray for those who should have been taking their exams this summer and the effects that this will have on them. We pray for those who are currently shielding. We pray also for the churches all around the world. For due to coronavirus, we cannot physically worship as a community together. We especially remember our own church here at St. Simon's. We pray for the governments all around the world, especially for our own government, our leaders, as well as the general public. As we come out of lockdown, that you will enable our leaders to lead us in the best interest for our nation. We pray that you bring a swift end to the riots in America and for us to remember what really unites us and not what divides us. We pray for those who are already marginalizing society, the homeless, the refugees, and those who are finding it extremely difficult during this pandemic. We pray that you will uphold the mental health of people all around the world as we gradually move into a new way of living. We pray that skills and experiences that we've learned and gained such as appreciation for each other, a sense of community, that all these will enhance and enrich our daily lives. In our hearts, we bring our silent petitions to you. Lord, we bring all our prayers to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for joining us again this week and I'll just finish our service with a little prayer. Father, thank you for the promises you've given us, the promises that we have hope in the new kingdom and that there's a time when you will come and fix all the hurt. 
and we pray that we'll fix our eyes on this this week and that we'll know that you're with us carrying us through and that we are safe in your hands we pray these things in your son's name